Hello friends, welcome to this third video in the Floss Tube and Variety Show series. This is Emily Williams coming to you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Thanks for coming back and if you are a new viewer, I'm so happy you're here. Thanks for watching. So because this is called Floss Tube, you can expect to see some cross stitch and because it's called a variety show, you can expect to see some other things. So let's see what we have. Um, I showed several Project 4 um, whips, works in progress last week. I'm only gonna show you two of them again this week, not because I didn't make progress on all of them, but because I'll show you next time. And um, so let's start with that. So this first one is from Sweet Land of Liberty by Blackbird Design, and it's called Salute to Abigail. And here's the picture of the whole chart. I'm really enjoying this. And let me, I figured out, I had a plan of where I'm putting things. We'll see if that works. And this is how far I've gotten. I've done quite a bit more on the border and I finished the alphabet and the word America there. So, that's been fun to work on. I did make a mistake. I think I might have even mentioned it in a Facebook post that I made about this, or maybe Instagram or something, you know, one of those places. And I fixed it. I decided I would fix it. So, good. There you go. Again, salute to Abigail Blackbird Designs. This is Ornament by Zephyr Mood, which is an Etsy shop. My goal for the month of May was to finish this block that's right next to the big block there in the lower part, and as you see, I did. And I'm gonna finish the borders that are missing there and then move on to another block. I am enjoying that. It's certainly beautiful. Colors, it's 18 um, count Ada, and the call for DMC, two colors of blue. The Blackbird design is, um, on 22 count hardanger. And I will say that I realized as I was stitching on that, that I'm getting practice for stitching over one on linen because the way that is woven, there are two uh, threads in each direction, but they're together. And uh, so you have to watch for the thread slipping under the junction of the two, even though it's not linen. So we'll see how I enjoy that as time goes on. I also worked on the under the roof of blue Ionian weather. And again, as I said last time, it's so much gray and there's so little of the actual picture done, it's hard to get a scale of what's been accomplished. So I'm not gonna bother showing that. I did do quite a bit on the Talavera tiles, which I'll show again, uh, my next video. I, I could show it today, but I'd rather show you a couple of older finishes that I did from years and years ago. So the first one I'll show you, show you is this um, piece. It's called Big Trees Sequoia National Park in this National Park Needlework Collector Series by Fulmer Craft. And I worked on this. I bought this long, 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 long ago. And I have a little note here that I made it on 16 count Ada. Um, between April and August of 1994. And I remember working on it because I was expecting our son Scott during that time. Whoa. Yeah, I, I can't do anything. I don't know what to do about this. Sorry about the glare. It's framed with glass, but you can get an idea. I stitched on this a lot of in the middle of the night sessions when I would have a backache and wake up. So I've worked on that back in 1994. Full coverage, I really enjoyed full coverage, I still do. And the next one I'm gonna show you, I can't really show you hardly anything of it because um, there is no picture. So I'll just show this, but you can sort of get the idea. It's an 11 by 17 piece of paper like that. Well, maybe there is a picture. Hold, please.
Well, you know, I think my, me showing it might be better, but I'll show it. I'll just show you the picture. And in a little while, I'll have something to say about hold, please. So stay tuned. Um, this is it. It called for a gray or sage green Ada, which I use. I think this is 16 count. And it's a bell pole. You see it has the, the instructions told where to get the bell pole hardware and how to finish it into a bell pole and I finished it myself, but I just, I really enjoyed stitching this. Again, this was probably in the early 90s, if not the late 80s. And uh, it's pretty long. I don't, I doubt this chart is in print anymore. The dimensions are um, 69 by 419 stitches. So it's pretty long and it has about 20 different colors of DMC, which is what I used. Little bee hives there. The roses, the tree are right here. The rose bushes are so beautiful. The border, the gate, which is really sort of like the, the garden fence is beautiful. The rows of flowers and this woman tending the garden really nice and there are a lot of the older cross stitches that I did long ago that either I never got framed some of them I'll show you over time and or we got framed and we had them up for a while and then our style changed and I took them down and they haven't gone back up so but this one has been up continuously So one other thing I want to show you, because this is a variety show, we're now into the variety show part. And this is a quilt I made several years ago. This is a miniature quilt. And this is, uh, the pattern is called Storm at Sea. And this is a true miniature. I mean, you can see that these blocks are about maybe three inches or two and a half inches wide, but it has the number of blocks that it would have if it were a quilt that went on a maybe a twin bed or a, a throw, but it's maybe 16 by 22 inches is all. Um, and the difference between a miniature quilt and a small quilt or a wall hanging is that a small quilt or a wall hanging just has fewer blocks of a, of a normal size, but a miniature quilt has a similar number of blocks to what a bed size or full size quilt of its proportions would have just much smaller. And I don't get impressed. I did not cut all these tiny little pieces and sew them together. They were from a kit, a laser cut kit that um, I bought. And I love making, I have made several miniature quilts, which I'll show more in the future. Um, but I got that kit at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival in uh, North, in um, Virginia Beach or Hampton, Virginia long ago, maybe 15 or so years ago. And I'll have a lot more to say about that quilt festival as time goes on. And then to just make sure that you understand what a variety show, what I mean by a variety show, let me show you this. In fact, I wish you could smell it. This is an 86 proof cake. Oh, it smells great. It's flavored with chocolate, rum, and coffee. And it comes from this cookbook, Made a Heater's Book of Great Chocolate Desserts. And this is the edition that was published in 1980. Uh, it was first published in 1978 and my husband gave this to me as a birthday present, I think, the first year we were married, or maybe an anniversary present. But as you can see, it has been well used. The pages are falling out. I've written notes. I've made many of these recipes. You can't really tell, but it's all beat up. That's a much loved cookbook. It's, I just checked, it is out of print, but available if you wanna pay a lot of money for it. Um, but this cake has a story that goes with it. It has a, a number of stories, a lot of stories. 
because I've made it for many, many gatherings and occasions and a lot of people have tasted it and liked it. And maybe at some point I'll tell you more of the stories, but right now I'm gonna tell you basically one of them, I think. Maybe two, might morph into two stories. So this cake I brought way back when Byron and I were first married to a family Thanksgiving gathering. And people were just went wild for it and it was gone immediately. It was the only dessert that was completely consumed by the 25 or so people that were, or 20 people that were at the Thanksgiving gathering. And people wanted the recipe and they wanted to know about it. And I said, well, it's called 86 Proof Cake and it has in it chocolate, coffee, and rum. And it's called 86 proof because you're supposed to use 86 proof liquor in it. Now, there isn't a much, there's only half a cup in that whole cake, but. Well, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were teetotalers, but they loved that cake. Yes, they did. And they knew it had rum in it and they still loved it. So that became what we had to bring every time. If we, there was ever a family gathering, people would say, Emily, will you bring the cake, 86 proof cake? It became the cake, capital T, capital C. And it was just so funny to me because my teetotaling mother-in-law wouldn't allow a family gathering to happen without this cake. And when our son was born in 1994, Thanksgiving was a few, you know, he was four months old at Thanksgiving. He was born in August, so three or four months old. And we went down to the family, was gathering in South Carolina for Thanksgiving. And I said to Byron, I just can't make that cake. I just don't have the energy. So we bought some really nice molasses cookies and took them. Well, <laughs> we were allowed in, but there was mass disappointment, mass disappointment that we had come without the cake. And I think the only thing that made the difference was that we brought the baby. We didn't have the cake, but we had the baby to show. So that was, uh, that was pretty funny. Okay, I'm gonna tell one more story just because it's part of the theme of uh, alcoholic cake in an unlikely setting. Our church uh, had mission, sent mission teams of the youth to various places in the summers for a mission trip experience for youth. And usually they had a fundraising event and often, several times, it was a silent auction. And I made this cake and took it to the silent auction. And it got, I think, $110 as a bid. And this was 20 something years ago. So that was a, a way more money then than it would be now. I mean, now you might pay close to $100 for, well, you wouldn't pay $100 for this, but you can pay a lot of money for cakes now, but $100 back then, that was a lot of money. And the couple that bought it was also kind of, non-alcoholic consuming kind of couple. So that was just pretty funny. People think that the alcohol burns off when you bake it, but it doesn't, not, not completely. It, it really doesn't. I mean, the cake doesn't actually boil. And the lattice, the structure of the uh, ingredients in the cake trap, the gases, for instance, if the alcohol were evaporating, the, the evaporated gas of the alcohol would be trapped in the structure of the cake. That's how cakes rise, is by trapping air inside them. So that was just a funny kind of thing. Uh, one other th thing that I wanted to mention, just because it, oh, huh, I wanna mention something from last week. One of my local friends who watches my videos, who watched my video last week, came over yesterday and she was admiring my cross stitch and she saw the Asian Chinese cross stitch that I showed last week, the framed item, sitting here in the family room. And she said, oh, I just love that. I am just so beautiful. I was so glad that you showed it and let me get a closer look at it. And I said, do you, do you like that? Would you like it? And I gave it to her because we don't really have a place for it. And I would rather have somebody have it who enjoys it. So it was kind of, we joked that it was a secret giveaway on my second floss tube video. 
And my next series of videos is going to be about how to declutter your home. So there you go. That was funny. Do not think that things I show on my video, you can just say, oh, I really like that. And I'm going to just offer them to you. Occasionally, maybe, yes. But the things I showed you today, I'm not going to offer you. No. I might offer you this, though. So this is six inches. It's a little piece of foam core board. It has a piece of batting on it and a binding that's gl a hot glue. And I used a little decorative stitch to make the binding. And I use this when I cross stitch um, to lay my threads on that I'm working on. So I would have, of course I don't have any threads out because I cleaned up before <laughs> this video, but I would have my little bobbin and maybe if there were a strand or two of thread from some color that I wasn't using but I had just used, I would be sitting here. And because it's um, batting, it has friction and so things don't fall off it. And it's something that I use while I cross stitch to hold my threads. And I got this idea from Lori Holt and I think they're called, this might be called a bitty board. Um, but I think it might be seven inches, the ones that she makes. But my friend Cindy and I made a bunch of these of different sizes, and I made a couple of six inch ones for cross stitch, which I enjoy using, and they're not, they're pretty easy to make, and I keep them in my project bag, which I keep my cross stitch in. I was gonna try to pull one out, but the whole stack would fall on the floor if I did, so next time. So, um, I guess that's pretty much all. I'll just say that the reason I have a cake here is because we're going down to a family gathering uh, tomorrow. Our son and daughter-in-law are coming in a little while here. They're gonna spend the night and we're gonna drive down to South Carolina. And of course I have to take a family, I mean, I have to take the cake with me because we might not be allowed otherwise. And that's why I made it. So that will be really fun. We have not seen the, this fam, these family members, I think pretty much any of them, since Thanksgiving of 2019. So that's a long time. Normally the whole family, which is now up to about close to 40 people with the spouses and the significant others, and some friends, you know, close family friends. Uh, there's around 40-ish people. Normally we get together every Thanksgiving and pretty much everybody comes. Certainly every family is represented, but most of the people we're seeing tomorrow, we haven't seen since Thanksgiving of 2019. So it'll be great to have a gathering. We're gonna have a cookout and there's a pool one of my nieces has a pool. There's at least one of my great nephews is graduating from high school this coming week. So hopefully we'll see him. And anyway, it'll be great. And it'll be great to be the first time we've left the state of North Carolina also. And only about the third time that we've left Chapel Hill, Durham area. So really amazing, big day tomorrow. Well, thank you again for watching. Um, I realize I'm supposed to say, if you like my videos, please subscribe. And if you want to be notified of when I put up a new video, you can click the little bell and that will notify you somehow. I'm not sure how notifications happen in YouTube, but it will notify you. And I would love it if you subscribe and you can comment and, um, Apparently YouTube has an algorithm and in the works where they look at likes and subscriptions and comments as a way to suggest a video to people who watch similar videos, I guess. So anyway, that would be great if you would do that. I'm thinking I'm gonna try to post something about once a week and it will be around 20 minutes or possibly a little less or maybe occasionally a little more. Thank you again for watching. Many blessings to you.